الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم را تلك آيات الكتاب والذي أنزل إليك من ربك الحق ولكن أكثر الناس لا يؤمنون الله الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمل ترونها ثم استوى على العرش وسخر الشمس والقمر كل يجي لأجل مسمى يدبر الأمر يفصل الآيات لعلكم بلقاء ربكم توكلون وهو الذي مد الأرض وجعل فيها رواسي وانهارا ومن كل الثمرات جعل فيها زوجين اثنين يغشي الليل النهار إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون وفي الأرض قطع متجاورات وجنات من عناب وزرع ونخير سنوان وغير سنوان وغير سنوان يسقى بماء واحد نفضل بعضها على بعض في الأكل إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يعقلون And you respect the listeners, we start today with the tafsir of Surah Al-Ba'ad. It's a Madani Surah, meaning all or majority of the verses of this Surah, the verses were revealed after the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those Surah which we regard as Makkiyah, Makki Surahs, meaning they mean that all the verses in that particular Surah or majority of the verse in that particular surah were revealed before the migration of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before the Hijrah. And the Madani surahs are those surahs and those chapters where all the verses or majority of the verses were revealed after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the migration of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Majority of the time, the Makki surahs are all the topics are related to mostly Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, and abstaining from shirk. The concluding part of Surah Yusuf, Allah Ta'ala also makes a mention in the whole of the incident of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, Allah makes a very important gesture in the final verse. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ In their narratives, in these stories and incidents, there is certainly a lesson for people of intelligence. All these stories narrated in the Quran and Kareem are not for the purpose of entertainment. It's not a purpose for entertainment. But it's not a storybook. Quran and Kareem is not a storybook. Quran and Kareem is a book of guidance. Quran and Kareem is a book of hidayah. Quran and Kareem is the book and the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which reminds us time and time again of our purpose in life. It reminds us time and time again of our destination. Purpose and destination. This is the most important thing. That's why in all these stories there's one great lesson we learn, the Ibra, as a lesson. So when these stories are narrated, the stories of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, all the other prophets, there are lessons in there. It's not just there just to read and listen to the, and read the story book and listen to it. No, there's a lesson. And the most important lesson is that what is our purpose of life, right? We worship Allah, Allah, that Allah who is one, that Allah who is one. That is the universal message of all the prophets. That is the universal teachings of all the prophets that came into this world, that we believe in one Allah, and we only worship one Allah, and we do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Surah Ikhlas, carries so much reward and virtues. Surah Ikhlas, which is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدِ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدِ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ قُفْمًا أَحَدِ Because this whole surah, it talks about the oneness of Allah. It talks about Tawheed. And Allah loves anyone when they talk about the oneness of Allah. SubhanAllah, Allah loves it. That's why Surah قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدِ Just reciting it once carries the reward of one third of the Qur'an Karim. If you recite it twice, it carries the reward of two-thirds of the Qur'an and Kareem. And if you recite it three times, it carries the reward of SubhanAllah, the whole of the Qur'an and Kareem. Why? Because of this. Allah is one. Allah is Samad. Allah is completely, totally independent. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need a father, doesn't need a mother. Allah doesn't need parents. Allah doesn't need children. Allah doesn't need partners. Allah doesn't need a wife. 
Allah doesn't need any associates. Allah is completely independent. Why? He is khaliq. He is khaliq. The one who is a khaliq is free from everything. Pure from everything. Free from everything. Doesn't need any help. Doesn't need any partners. Doesn't need any associates. Me and you, my dear respected listeners, we are human beings. We are makhluk. We are creation. We need partners. We need partners. We need associates. We need helpers. We need assistance. We cannot do things alone. That's why Allah allocated so many human beings in every zamana, in every time, because we all need one another. Countries need one another. Human beings need one another. Families need one another. Parents need their children. The children need their parents. We all need everything. It's all interlinked. And Allah is giving us a big lesson. That is, you are muhtaj and I am not muhtaj. You are dependent and I am not dependent. I am completely independent. Allah Muhammad. We are dependent. We are helpless. Allah is ghani. And we are faqeer. Faqeer in the sense that we are totally helpless. Totally helpless. We need help, we need assistance, we need madad, we need usra. We need mashwira, we need consultation, we need other people's opinion, we need other people's help, we need other people's skills and talents. Allah is free from all that. Allah is free from all that. And that was a universal ta'aleem and the teachings of all the prophets. That we only bow down before one Allah who is our creator, who is our nourisher, who is our sustainer, who is our provider, who is our khaliq, who is our raziq. That is Allah. And Allah Ta'ala created us for a purpose. That's what it makes mention here. Then all these stories is a lesson. Lesson that those who are obedient to Allah and the messengers of their time, they will be successful. And those who are not obedient to the Allah and the messengers of their time, they are unsuccessful. <coughs> They're not remaining in this world. They've just been destroyed as well. They have gone as well. But what lesson have we learned from that? That we make sure we follow the footsteps of those people who followed the messengers of the time, who followed the prophets. For them, who, those who follow the prophets of their time, who are obedient, live a life of obediency, Allah Ta'ala calls them here, li'ulil albab. They're the intelligent ones. They're the intellectual ones. According to me and you, who are intellectual? It's going to be many degrees. Got a PhD, got a master's degree, got this, got that, got this, got that. Alhamdulillah, it's fine. But at the same time, if that same individual who's got all those degrees, who's regarded as an intellectual person, but Alhamdulillah, he's also implementing the teachings of the Quran in his life. He's understood the nasiha of the Quran. He's understood the lessons that have been mentioned in the Quran Kareem. He's learned from those lessons. He's implementing in his life. Then that person is also intellectual in the eyes of Allah subhanahu Whereas on the other hand, that person, he's got all the PhDs, master's degree, everything. He's intellectual in the eyes of the people. He's intellectual in the eyes of the people. But unfortunately, on the other hand, he has not taken the teachings of the Quran. He has rejected the nasihat of the Quran. He's rejected the advice of the Quran. He has not learned that he needs to be obedient to Allah and his messenger throughout his whole life. And he's, he's actually obedient to his own desires his whims, his temptations, then unfortunately, though he may be intellectual in the eyes of the people, but in the eyes of Allah, he is not intellectual. He is not intellectual. So remember, we look for status and maqam in the eyes of the people, but most important is that we need to look what is my status and maqam in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how can we get that maqam? How can we get that status? Allah makes a mention in the Quran Kareem. Inna akramakum inda Allah yatqaakum. Indeed, the most honored of you in the eyes of Allah, that person who has status in the eyes of Allah, taqwa. That person who has taqwa, fear of Allah, God conscious, who is, knows that Allah is watching me, Allah is seeing me. And because of that, he refrains from guna and sin and is totally obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then that person is the most honored. He's got some status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Ra'ad, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, 
Alif Lam Mim Ra. These are Huruf al Muqatta'at, the meaning of which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Tilka ayatul kitab, these are the verses of the book. Walladhi unzila ilayka min rabbika al haq. Whatever has been revealed to you from your Rabb is the truth. Whatever has been revealed in the Quran Kareem is nothing but the truth. Full of haq. Full of haq. There's one blind person, mashallah, who was unable to read the Quran Kareem. But what he used to do, he used to place his finger on the verses of the Quran to say, This is haq, this is haq, this is haq, this is haq, this is haq. This is haq, this is haq, this is haq. This is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. This is the truth. When Allah was to give him hidayah and guidance, subhanAllah, that person is blind, but Allah gives him hidayah and guidance as well. Allah grants him the reality of the kalam of Allah. And then there are those people who, they've got eyes, they can see, but they still reject the truth. It's all to do with hidayah and guidance, whom Allah Ta'ala chooses. <coughs> Whatever has been revealed to you from your Rabb is the truth. But most people do not believe. Most people they reject. The word here, Akthar, Akthar al Nas, most people, subhanAllah. When it comes to being obedient, the obedient ones, Allah makes mention, the very few who are obedient. Very few who are obedient. When it comes to Akthar, majority, Aksar and Nas majority they don't believe. Majority they're not ready to believe. Majority are the ones that reject. So we can see what's how the trend is that majority of the people we see are rejecting. Minority. The Deen Dar, the pious and the real religious people, the pure and genuine, they are very, very few. That's indication here. And Aksar La Yuminun. Aksar La Yaqilun. That's what one great scholar used to say in his dua. Oh Allah, make, make me among the few. Don't make me among the majority. Normally we always like to be among the majority, we don't want to be the minority. Oh Allah, make me among the few. Don't make me among the majority. So someone asked, why make this dua? To make me among the few and not make me among the majority. Because in the Quran Kareem, the minority other ones are the pious ones and the righteous ones and the muttaqi and the dindar. Allah wants to be with them, those are very few, because they are only few, and I want to be with them. Don't make me the majority, majority, when I kill the and nas la yu'minun. Majority, they do not know. They are not ready to understand, they are not ready to believe, majority are ready to reject. And this is what we see in the world today. No matter how much explanation we give about the beauty of Islam, that is because Hidayah is in the hands of Allah at the end of the day. And they have not been given Hidayah. We make dua for the Hidayah and guidance. But at the same time, we should be steadfast in what we do. Don't be complacent. Today we've got Iman, tomorrow we might not have Iman. Allah will choose someone else to do his work. Iman. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a mention. Allah alladhi rafa'a samawati bi ghayri amadin tarawnaha. It is Allah who raised the skies without any pillar that you see. No pillars. The sky, there's no pillars. You need a big building, then you need pillars. This is the whole world, the whole dunya, and there's no pillars. Any? Allah Akbar. Allah Ta'ala showing His greatness. These are His signs from which we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ma'rifat of Allah. And by recognizing Allah, then we have the muhabbat of Allah. The love of Allah. People believe in Allah. Allah is showing these signs. How can you reject Allah? How can you say Allah does not exist? Do you not see signs right around us? How many joints in our bodies? How our body will function? How body works? It's amazing. Who's this karigari? Is this manufacturing of the human body? Who's made that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu alladhi rafa'a samawati bi ghayri amadin tarawnaha. It is Allah who lays the sky without any pillar that you see. Thumma stawa ala al-arsh. Then rose to the throne <coughs> and subjugated the sun and the moon. Each runs to its appointed term. The sun, the moon in orbit, you got the appointed time. Appointed time when they move and they run in us. Until when? Until the day of Qiyamah. When the day of Qiyamah will come, 
the sun will become benur. The sun will have no more nur, no more light left anymore. إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْتَصَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَى Everything will be destroyed. عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَى That every soul will see what he has sent forward. Sent forward meaning in the hereafter. Whatever we do in this world is going forward into the hereafter. That is the bank account of the hereafter. There are two bank accounts, one the good and one the bad. The good, the bad. يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ يُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّكُمْ تُوْقِنُونَ He plans affairs and explains the sign in detail, so he may be convinced of meeting your Rabb. All these signs that Allah talks about, so we are convinced that a time will come and have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people on the day of Qiyamah will be given the book in the right hand. One of the reasons why they'll be given, Allah makes mention in that in the verse, إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقِ الْحِسَابِيَةِ Because he says, that person says, that the reason I've got the book in the right hand, because I was convinced that I'm going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. I was convinced that there'll be hisab and kitab and there'll be reckoning. And those people who are convinced in the dunya that there's hisab and kitab and reckoning and judgment, look at the lifestyle. It's completely different from those people's lifestyle who don't believe in the Akhirah, who don't believe in hereafter, who are not convinced that there's going to be Qiyamah, who are not convinced that they have to answer to Allah for their, for their actions and their deeds. Their lifestyle is completely different compared to those people who are convinced that yes, whatever I do, I have to answer to my Lord on the day of Qiyamah. Their lifestyle is different. Their lifestyle is full of taqwa, piety. They're very cautious. Uh, they don't go even close to haram. They don't go even close to any sin. They have a very balanced life, balance of deen, but deen and they're fulfilling all the rights of the, all the shobas and the branches of deen, whether it's related to worship, whether it's related to dealings, whether it's related to social life, family life. They are very balanced in that. Everything is according to the sharia. There's no extremism in there. May Allah give us a tawfiq. So those who are convinced for the day of Qiyamah, and they've got that fikr and Allah has opened their heart, they're already making the preparations for the hereafter already. Even living in this dunya, committing the worldly amal and worldly deeds, even then they are still God conscious at all times. So their lifestyle is completely different. And look at those people who unfortunately not convinced about the akhirah, their lifestyle is completely That means they're completely neglectful of the hereafter. They're going about as if there's no hereafter, there's no death, there's no qiyamah. And even when we die, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. So when someone dies for a person who doesn't believe in the hereafter, there's no talk about hereafter, there's no talk about their judgment, there's no talk about maghfirat, there's no talk about that at all. Die peacefully, they die in their sleep, they die this and then that's it, khatam, kissa khatam. And for a mu'min, when someone dies, we should be really worried. If it's a believer, then we should make dua, Allah Ta'ala granting Jannah and granting of doors. And if it's a non-believer, we should be worried that one ummati of Rasulullah has departed from this world without him. There's nothing to be happy about. One ummati of the Prophet has departed from this world, from this dunya, without imam. Now, how, what is, how is that person going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All the stages after the stage of the grave, the qabr, the questioning. Because they have no fear for the akhirah and the hereafter, no worry, concern, they don't even talk about it. They don't even talk about it. Someone passes away, God must not even come onto their lips, on their tongues. But as Shariat and Islam teaches us, soon as a person passes away, we're still alive, he can't read it. As soon as a person passes away, what we commanded by Allah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Immediately. SubhanAllah. Amazing. Eh? Amazing. We belong to Allah. We are going to return to Allah. And another hadith, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when daughter passed away, the Prophet stated these words, inna lillahi ma akhata wa lahu ma a'ta. Belongs to Allah. Indeed belongs to Allah. What he gives and what he takes. 
So even at that time, we're reminding ourselves. That person's passed away, we can't remind him anymore. But when we read Inna Lillah, we'll be reminding ourselves. We have to go as well. We have to return to Allah. And when this, when everyone's reciting, it has power. It's powerful. That's why those people don't believe in Allah and the Qiyamah, they don't want anyone else to believe. They don't want to mention these things. Because religion is power, deen is power. Talking about Allah is power. It can change people. And death itself changes a lot of people. Someone, you think someone's coming to the fold of Islam, and someone goes towards deen through a big taqreer, a big speech. No, no. Sometimes death itself is sufficient. That's why Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, on his ring, he had, he had it engraved, the words, the, the words, kafa bil mawti wa'idhan. He had engraved on his ring, kafa bil mawti wa'idhan. Nasihat ke liye maut kafi. For nasihat and advice, maut is sufficient. And that's why so many people, you see, sometimes after the death of their loved ones, they come to the change. Their life changes. They become more pious, they become more righteous. For whom Allah ta'ala gives tawfiq. So again, like I mentioned, that the whole Quran Kareem is giving us a lesson uh, that we convinced that we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah and we have to answer. So he plans affairs and explains the signs in detail so they may be convinced of meeting your Rabb. Meeting your Rabb. The hadith, I'll just conclude on this, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions he who loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala loves to meet him. He who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. But only that person will be ready to meet Allah who's made his preparation for the hereafter. Who'll be there longing to meet Allah. If you have not made the preparations for the hereafter, Allah Akbar, they will not be ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. We're going to go for an interview, for a job. If we prepare for that interview, then we want to meet that person who's going to take the interview. <laughs> Otherwise, we don't want to go. I am not ready. I have not made effort for my exams or tests. I don't even want to sit in that paper. But if we, the 60, 70 years of the life that Allah has granted us, if we made the necessary preparation for the hereafter, then yes, there will be somewhere in the heart who will say, I am ready to meet my Lord. I am ready to meet my Lord. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the reality of the dunya and the reality of the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to learn from all the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. The recognition and the ma'rifat of Allah and the love of Allah and the longing to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi.